if you will, just make sure your cell phones are on silent, please. Okay? Appreciate it. to uh, call the Lambs County Board of Elections to order today on March the 12th at 4.30 p.m. Uh, we'll start with the uh, invocation, which uh, we'll start with, uh, do that, and then the Pledge of Allegiance, Mr. Jackie will do that for us. We can all stand, please. Let us pray. We thank you for this moment, this time, and this season in order to focus on county operations for the relations office. We also invite your presence in that we may focus and be clear and supportive of any regulations and things that we must discuss at this hour. We thank you for our opportunity together and we invoke your presence once again to guide us, lead us, and show us the way that you would have us to go. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. <coughs> Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We'll move down the uh, agenda and we'll now have the uh, minutes for approval from our last meeting. After reviewing the minutes, uh, everything appears to be in order to me. Mm -hmm. Any, anything to change from any one of y'all? No changes. Yes. I so move that we approve the minutes of the last board meeting. I see. Do we have the uh, approval and we can move on now. What I want to do. Uh, I know that, that uh, we have some people here today that uh, from BSU uh, wanted to discuss the uh, BSU polling site and I want to move that on up to this next item to be discussed here. Uh, Ms. Cox has been working on this. This isn't something that just came up in the past few weeks or anything. This, this is something that we have discussed in several meetings, uh, talked to her several times, and she has done some research on it and want to get her information on what she's uh, been able to come up with for the BSU polling site, and we can uh, see what this is and then move on and, and see what we need, need to discuss and read it back. Okay? Ms. Cut. Okay. Um. I've heard back from everybody who contacted at BSU, um, and all of the potential pitfalls I think have been addressed. Uh, space is available at the Student Union. Uh, I've been working with Mr. Fondry, um, and he said that is available. Uh, officially, the young Democrats and the college Republicans are willing to collaborate to provide poll workers, so that eliminates that difficulty. The BSU Public Safety Department, Chief Alan Rowe, has said that security will not be an issue. He will ensure that if we have to lock equipment in one of the rooms, uh, they've got CCTV cameras in there, and they will put extra patrols on it to make sure it's safe, so that's not an issue. Um, if the board chooses to approve this request today, um, that doesn't make it official. It has to go to uh, the BSU president, and he will have to approve that. So if you have a vote today, it will be to request approval from Carvajal. So basically then he has the final say as to whether yes. anything there is available. And, uh, will you be drafting up a letter or some correspondence to send to him showing that if you have contacted these people or yes, I've already got it drafted. Already got it drafted up. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So there should be no 
pit bulls, no stumbling blocks, no anything, just his approval would be the only thing left. And that this would go into effect in for the November mm -hmm. election? If he approves it. If you all approve it, then he approves it. Okay. Right. Any, any questions? Uh, no, I can't thank you for saying me. I have no other questions. I think you answered my primary question was the number of poll workers that would be available to work the actual site. So that question is answered. That's good. That's, the, the poll worker situation is, is the biggest thing. That's getting enough poll workers uh, and staff to, to man that polling site. Uh, if it's something that, that the college can help with, the Democratic Party, the Republican Party, whatever, work together and, uh, and be able to come up with the poll work. Uh, it would be a super experience for, for these people. Y'all are the next generation to take over when we're gone or, or we've, we've said turn it over to somebody else. It's in y'all's hands. Y'all are the ones that are going to have to be doing this and leaving this country in years to come. You need to understand what it is, what it's about, and what goes on. You need to know just like today. I'm proud to see y'all here today to see what yes. goes on in this meeting. To see, to see your county agencies, not just this one, every agency in this county. You need to know what goes on in your in your county, in your state, and what these people do. Because without the knowledge of knowing what their job is, you can't address it. You need to see it from every angle. And uh, I'm, sorry, I'm, I'm proud to see y'all here today. Uh, I don't have any, any questions as far as anything. I think you have contacted every person you need to, to try to contact. Uh, the hands are, uh, it, it's for us to decide and, and, uh, and then for the cops to decide. Uh, I don't know what the time frame would be for anything to come from the cops, uh, but I know they, they can get on it and get it done. And, uh, they don't move quickly. They, right? they can contact uh, Ms. Cox, she's a supervisor of elections in this county and does a fantastic job in this county. Uh, but I'm, I'm open for a, a motion for uh, a site there at PSU and, uh, and the approval for, for the site to uh, for them to forward on and move on. Uh, Are we allowed to ask questions? Uh, I can, yeah, I, 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 I can do that. May I yeah. ask a couple? Yes, ma'am. Um, first of all, what would the cost be of opening another poll? The cost would be negligible because it's only the poll worker pay. Um, would you have to declare that another precinct? Yes, it would be another precinct. It would be another precinct, right. right. And how many people would be voting mm -hmm. there, actually voting? Because so many of the college kids vote in other counties in their home. Uh, we have families. right now a thousand and one thousand three hundred and five students registered to vote in Lance County living on campus. Um, those are the registered voters that would vote touch screen. You have eleven thousand students there that could potentially register and vote out of precinct and another how many staff? Three thousand staff faculty? Another three thousand staff and faculty that could potentially vote out of precinct there as well. So the potential is like 14,000. Now whether or not they do that or not, that's up to them. It was like today, Northside's got 20,000 voters and four people have voted by one o'clock, so. And that, and that would be something for both the parties to address as to let the students understand that they can vote in, the, in that precinct. They can transfer their registration to Lowndes County and vote in Lowndes County for, for that. And uh, it's, it's, it's a workable thing, and I, I think uh, giving them the opportunity, hopefully, you know, we tried it before and it didn't, it didn't work out. And uh, 
there's nothing to say that it's going to work out this time, and, and we're going to, you know, hopefully give it a shot again and uh, and see where it goes from there. But simply yeah. having a polling place there is not sufficient. It takes work of everybody combined, all of these agencies, to turn out the vote. You know, just having one there, it's not the same as you build it and they will come. You know, that doesn't work. When it, when you had it before at the college, what was the the number of students voting? Do you registered or voting? Voting that actually voted. Registered. And when was this? When it was like it was ten years ago. Ten years. Ago. And registered were a little over a thousand, almost eleven hundred, and eight people voted. Eight. Eight students voted, and one person voted provisional out of precinct in that precinct. Are we open the fourth questions? Because I would like to make. But we're willing to give it a try again. This is a whole new set of students. It's a whole new political climate. There's a whole new level of interest. There's a lot more students living on campus. And there's a lot more knowledge among the people on campus than there was then as well. They're a lot more involved, I think. I think this will have a better response. It's, it's, it's a shot. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. I, mean, it's, I was going to say eight people. And, we, and we could, you know, I know it, that was 10 years ago. But Four people in Northside with 20,000 voters today, so. You mean in this one right now? Yes, mm -hmm. the one we're holding today, the election today. I thought there was 380, uh, 340. That's what's on your Oh, that can, that are registered there, but anybody can go in there and vote. You know, anybody can vote in any precinct in Georgia. <laughs> Yeah, but I but mean, four people. The other precincts haven't had much better luck either. The 300 and something isn't that early voting, advanced yes. voting. Wasn't that advanced? Voting? We generally get 50 to 65 percent in early voting. In a small election, it's about 50 50. Uh, we're getting more in here because we're catching people coming in for the splash and say, hey, <coughs> you can vote for 176, so come on up here and vote for 176. That's why the numbers have increased in here. Can BSU, BSU students still be able to vote down here in the three weeks prior to the election? Of course. Yeah. So they had three weeks prior to the election to come here. Yes, yeah. Just like and everybody else. They, they still got the, the capability of voting uh, absentee. I mean, so it's, you know, they, they've got every opportunity to vote if they want to vote. They can still vote by mail. They can still vote early. They can still get a free ride up here to vote if they want. They can still get a free ride to vote in any precinct in Lowndes County if they want. Uh, that doesn't negate any of their possibilities. It just gives them one additional one because, you know, college students are worried about a lot more than, than adults are. You know, they're trying to create a new life, learn how to exist on their own, figure out what they're going to eat, figure out how they're going to get time to wash their clothes and study and take a test tomorrow and get to class and have a social life. So giving them that opportunity to get in there so much, it might increase the turnout a little bit. I don't know. Might. It's just another opportunity because being at the university just gives them an easier way to get to it um, without any hindrances. Um, we all know the date of election or the last day to vote is held on a Tuesday. Well, it depends on your schedule at Valdosta State. If it's a Monday, Wednesday schedule, or a Tuesday, Thursday schedule. And this is just another addition or a possibility. The scheduling may not always afford that option, even though we do have three weeks prior, but just looking at scheduling alone for students. So, There's weekends in those three weeks. Oh, it is open to seven, and you're right, with it being open to seven. Then there's Saturday voting. And then and there's Saturday voting. If there's a federal if there's candidate a, but at the same time, this is this is something that is not necessarily a bad thing. I think it's just an opportunity for our students at, that are located in this community to have an option, just one more option um, to consider. And it is just, you know, it has to go through some other levels, as we've already heard. But we also have to know that um, it when you're away from home, no matter which direction home is, it's just good to know that your community 
is supportive of what your requests are, even at that. So we have to be mindful and hear of that concern as well. So. Um, there are so many things that we provide on campus. Um, we have police department, we have mental health, we have, you know, a physician's office. You know, it's it's kind of like our own community and there's really, you know, it's a way for us to learn to be adults and kind of go out into that world. And a lot of people are turning 18 as they're going into their college experience. So it's kind of a way for them to um, move into this and kind of have this experience with their peers in a environment that is not intimidating. You know, they can go to the student union, they can vote with their friends, they can go with a peer group that they're comfortable with, and they don't have to potentially um, walk to, you know, a precinct that doesn't have sidewalks all the way, or um, if they've been injured, or they, you know, they're in wheelchairs, they can't make it because there aren't sidewalks or, you know, to affiliate with a certain party if they aren't affiliated, or to have to walk alone if they're a single female, or any of the other, you know, there, there are ways for us to get to um, a voting, a polling station, but to have one on campus would just be another part of completing our community on campus and helping us to um, more help us see ourselves autonomously as adults and to be able to, you know, make us citizens. Like, that's what we are. We are citizens and to give us that voice because we vote. Like, that's part of what we do. I see it as one more part of the transition phase. When you come Absolutely. to college, it's a big transition. And anything that helps smooth that transition from not being a part of the political process, not being an adult yet, not taking responsibility. This is a step in between not and fully. And it eases you into it. It takes away some of the, the concern, the anxiety and things like that, the difficulty. And it transitions you right into, okay, I'm getting used to voting on campus. Now I'm graduating, where's my polling place? Because you're already used to voting. You're already used to the process. You already know what's going to happen you've taken the effort to find out the candidates because you can vote right there. Mm -hmm. It makes life a lot easier. So anything that eases a student from the high school to the adult is going to be a positive, and I think that's what this polling place is. Mm -hmm. yeah, easement is definitely a, a big thing, and I'd like to thank you, Deb, for reaching out to us and helping us with this, because it really does mean a lot. Um, you know, I am a student with no car. You know, and that makes it incredibly difficult for me if I do want to vote because, you know, like Lori said, there is no sidewalk the whole way, you know, and we all know that us the drivers aren't necessarily the best in the world. <laughs> I don't feel like getting bumped off to go vote. Um, but it's so much more than that. You know, yes, 10 years ago, you know, voter turnout was very, very low, but that was 10 years ago. And like, as you said, none of us were there then. I was in middle school. <laughs> I couldn't even vote. But um, what I think is very, very important is, you know, students don't like being intimidated. Students like having the ability to just not have to take time out of their day and reschedule classes and, you know, have a grievance in their life to do their civic duty to be a voter. You know, and having one on campus where the, the rationale is there and the stigma to do it is there. Because there are so many students on campus, especially in today's political climate, that are very active and they want to get involved so badly, but many of them don't know how, or they're afraid, or whatever the reason. Or they don't have time. Or they don't have time, exactly. And you know, then because of that, they just don't. And that's really a problem, because indifference is worse than anything. But so, I'm not saying that we are enforcing that indifference, but it's kind of a side effect of not having that ease. And um, that's why I'm here today, you know, for the students, asking all of you, you know, to please <coughs> consider this and allow us to have a polling station on campus. 
Um, I would like just to make a request um, to Ms. Cox. Is there any way that you can make your draft letter to the president public so we know what's inside of it? Um, because my concern is that this particular polling site back in 2009 was used as like a test trial. Um, so I just want to know that this is a polling site that is permanent if we have the right turnout. Because what is that number that, what's that magic number that's going to keep the polling site from not leaving? There is no magic number. Okay. So I just want to know that uh, this particular polling site will be sustained, continued forward. But just as far as the letter that you sent to uh, President Carvajal, if you can take the time maybe to Give me your email and I'll shoot it to you because it's already drafted. Sounds good. Thank you so much. I would, uh, I would really like for, uh, what's, what's his name? Dr. Carvajal. Dr. Carvajal. Dr. Carvajal. I, I would really feel better if this letter went to him instead of out to the public before he ever sees it. And I think as a courtesy to him, this is something dealing with VSU, and he is the president of VSU, for him to have the first look at the letter at VSU, and then you as your uh, Democratic and Republican representatives once she gets that letter to him, then you all go to him and say, you know, like we want to discuss the BSU polling site uh, because I, I wouldn't want to be the president of the school and then hear something comes in here that I hadn't even seen yet. That that would sort of little turn me off just a little bit. It looks like a setup. I, I'm the one that's in charge of doing this. Yeah, I understand. I just want to make sure that in the letter it's specified um, that it's not just an automatic approval from Dr. Calder Hall, that maybe he has some type of hearing with the students to get students' feedback. I just want to make sure that students' voices are heard and it's not right. going straight to the administrators because students, we do pay tuition um, and that ultimately uh, goes to the university. So without us, the university won't exist. So I just want to make sure that we do have a say in this process. Uh, I, I would think by time she gets the letter out and he gets it and, and you would have sufficient time to go in and make sure then that he's, that he's on board with y'all. All right, that's what not, I want to do. Not y'all first and then him come on board. Okay. And, uh, because he's the one that's got to put the last John Henry on. All right, thank you. If yeah. the board approves this today, I will send the letter tonight. So by tomorrow morning it will be in place. If the board approves it. Let's yeah. make sure he gets it first. He gets it first. Well, I won't send anybody. They can get it has, from him. And he has he has read it and, and sees and if he needs to talk to you and then uh, I don't want to uh, what I what I would say. Okay. Yes, ma'am. As a student who's actively engaged on campus in multiple organizations, I want to make it my priority to work with all of you to get students involved, to get people working the polls and assist in really any way that we can. Because the students want this. The students really want this, and it will make their experience in college a little bit easier, which is always a little bit nice. Um, so basically, we just want to extend a hand, and however we can help, we would like to. You start by filling out a poll worker application. <laughs> <laughs> no one has filled one out yet. They're right there on the table by the cookies. Okay? Don't construe that as a bribe, but they're by the cookies. I mean, the, thing that you, the things that y'all need to do is when Miss Cox sends out poll worker request, is get your email, get your stuff to her, and then she can send it to y'all, and you know it's time to start recruiting. And uh, that's what you need to do. Because y'all are the ones that are there hands-on, face-to-face, and you can talk to these people. I mean, she asked, and that's as far as she can go. And, uh, but it's up to y'all to get the people involved and get the poll workers that are needed for and that site. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. But thank you. And usually, Ms. Cox sends out an email to all student org presidents um, prior to any election. The student org presidents receive an email requesting for poll worker assistance. And um, I know there's over 250 student organizations on that, on that campus about us, the State University. So please, in your efforts, and please get on our email list, but in your efforts, the office does send 
that information out to the campus and it's usually sent to the student org president and possibly the advisors um, list in the old system before there was presence and all the okay. yeah because okay, I was and president Blake's last year and we didn't receive it y'all didn't receive it but I know I received it as an advisor okay. of an organization on that campus I received copies of it as well and request asking for participation so be mindful and pay attention to your emails that do come out because it does come and it usually comes from your student organization office um, on campus. I just wanted to add that we're interested in new creative options as well, in addition to email. Um, I can always present that at a later date, but we're definitely open to creative, innovative opportunities to get students involved with us. Let me know whenever you get ready. We'll talk about it. Yes, I think this would be a really great educational opportunity at this ASU campus because they'll, they'll learn right up front how the process works, what goes into the process, and what's not happening in the process. <laughs> well, I can see it in real life if I can see it. And actually right in front of them. I went to college and I was out of town from, from where I lived. And it was difficult. I had to go down to the courthouse where I lived and have us have it notarized when I did my voting. Oh my gosh. So that was really... What state were you in? Florida. All right. We uh, that explains one, it. one quick thing from you, please. Yes, um, just going back to um, this uh, 2019 election as a municipal election, we just wanted to at least get a commitment through 2020 because, again, the turnout may not be great for, you know, the voter turnout is, is a lower number for municipal elections, and we don't want that turnout to be like this be a test year um, when really the, the greater turnout would be for a 2020 election. It's, it's, it, it, it's going to be not just this one thing right okay. here. No. Okay. 2019. We're not doing this for that. 2019, <coughs> in my mind, will be the time to get the word out to all the campus. So when they come back after summer, or if they stay all summer, they'll start getting into the 2020 mode. They'll come and they'll see they can vote on campus, the word will get out and spread. They'll be used to this, so when we get into 20 and 20, there should be no questions. Mm -hmm. it, it can be a conversation at the school. I hope. And, I, and I'm hoping, I'm wondering if your letter lends to that clarification to specifically request that the location be open leading into the general election in 2020. We can't put parameters on what the president approves. Okay. We can ask, mm -hmm. uh, but we're not going to put stipulations on it and right. say we require you to guarantee us five years. Right. We're not okay. going there. Is that an ask then in the letter? No. That's not an ask. He could, he could terminate it at any point, and we realize that no matter what he says. Okay. But then maybe there's a job for the students to keep working. Well, we will, there you go. If everything's yes, improved, we'll, we'll put it in their ballpark. Your SGA needs to really voice that also. So student government is one of the governing branch, branches of the university. And with that being said, student government, student, student government's president, executive board, and the Senate, when you have your meeting, need to put that petition forward and also state those requests um, that you have as students because the limitations that we have would be submitting the letter as a board. That would be our limitations, but the student body would need to then approach your student government association and all of their representatives that go and pass bills and write the bills and make sure that that is a bill moving forward so that that could be discussed on that next level where we may not have that access. I'm sorry. For, for those of you that don't know, Carla is a faculty and she handles most of the incoming freshmen at VSU because she's from VSU. If you don't know her, you should. If you haven't been in my office yet. <laughs> <laughs> one, one quick thing. I'm actually a member of SGA. I am exec counsel appointed executive board, and my president knows that I'm here today, and he knows that I'm passionate about this, he knows that the students are passionate about this, and his one of his biggest priorities is doing what's best for the students. And if this is, I know for a fact that he will enforce it. If this is what is best for the students of BSU. Okay. Okay. It'll, it'll be in their hands to do it. I mean, the students, students are the ones that will make the decision on doing it. I know Jacob will. Yes, sir. And say, because other people who aren't in that precinct decide they want to go there and, and do the hand ballot, they can go there also? Absolutely. 
Of course, if you're not a student on VSU, you got to go through the parking process, you get a permit, you got to walk. How far is it across campus? Well, Two miles, have three have miles. Parking available for voters. Whatever parking is available is available. I mean, but. Valdosta State University is a walking campus. Yeah. It, you know, it, it's yes. not very friendly for somebody to come up and say, I'm going to park in the Oak Street parking lot, and the only parking space is way over there on Sestella, and walk all the way across there and all the way across the campus. Well, most parking places have a space for parking designated for parking. Right? Not right around the student union that I know of. Does anybody know about parking? Well, I mean, there? polling places in Germany. Most polling places most do, polling but places this polling place is on campus right. for the students that are already walking. That's their primary focus. If anybody else wants to vote there, they can go there and vote there like any other polling place. There's no restrictions to just be issue students. And I don't anticipate much of that. All right. Uh, moving on back to the uh, motion for Ms. Cox to generate a letter to the issue president. Yes. Uh, so mm -hmm. I second it. I was going. All in favor for the the issue public site to, to go to their uh, president of the school and let him have his approval or whatever. That's going to be him. All in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. uh, folks, uh, we have some more meeting to discuss here on some other items. Y'all are welcome to stay if you want. Uh, we'll give you a few minutes if y'all are ready to leave before we Move down to the next agenda item. If you leave, take cookies. Be glad to y'all have Sit for it. Thank you very much for this. Thank I think it's a really positive thing. For we'll, we'll give everybody a few minutes here for just a minute to uh, to leave if y'all want to. We can move on and let y'all stay for the rest of the meeting. Whatever, whatever y'all want to do. Yes. Thank you, Tom. Again, uh, no rising thing if you want. Take off. <coughs> Speak up. <laughs> what you need? Are you looking for an excuse to run away? Are you saying we're boring? No. Now, lots of times it said we're boring. <laughs> Come here. Yeah. Yes. How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. Yes. Yes. Hi. Yes. Hey, Greg, I just want to know if you were. Yes. Because I, I have another opinion I have to just show. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm.